In this riff, I wanted to bring up a subject that most people are not really aware thereof. They don't understand, they don't comprehend how significant, how imperative, how fantastic um, the idea is due to the fact that it's something that we've seem to have always experienced especially uh, people or populations that have lived under a set of rules a a fixed system of law now what are we talking about here specifically I want you to think about uh, the Bill of Rights or the United States Constitution as it was founded um, in in the late 1700s, before the 1800s, during the American Revolution, when the United States declared itself independent from Great Britain. And I'm not sure, as you're listening to this, how much of history you have gone over of human history and the entire record of what is known. Now, of course, there is the concept that the winners always write history. So we do have to strongly consider that. But I believe there's enough objective data, information about human history to make uh, factual observations of how humanity has lived under systems of rulership and systems of law perpetuated throughout the millenniums and many times to the detriment of those populations. If we examine the entire scope of what we have known to be human history, you will notice patterns. Um, certain um, aspects of manifestations that come up and continue to replicate and like a cycle uh, like a habit that keeps coming back we see the final results of those actions if you notice as you examine the entire scope of human history and if you were to look at, you know, all the world powers of at the different stages in history that dominated the known worlds, for example, one of the oldest, widely known, um, or, you know, past known empires was that of the Egyptian uh, rulership. There's plenty of record that there were a predominant world power for a very long time. The pyramids and their architecture, the engineering, the genius behind the building of these buildings testified to that fact that they had a system of rulership that was perpetuated through that known world and it was known to be a world power. There's record, there's history, there is archaeological evidence that that is the case. Massive evidence. And that following the fall of Egypt, other world powers follow the known world. We can think of, for example, um, the Assyrian Empire, the Babylonian Empire. We can think of the Greek Empire. We can think of the Roman Empire and its rich history and its fall, its rise, as well as how it fell. 
Um, we can think of the British Empire and how they had a fleet of ships that would, you know, travel the oceans and conquer many lands under the name of monarchies and royal bloodlines and so forth. But then there was this drastic change, a massive change, a shift in thinking, in the consciousness, the awareness of rulership in the world, which completely transformed the known world. It was literally a quantum leap of progress that completely modified, transformed the known world to what we have today. And it, and due to this um, movement, the world transformed into a place where there was more freedom, more prosperity, more wealth, more affluence than has ever been known. It also paved the way for ingenuity and creativity uh, for example the industrial revolution followed by the technological revolution which Nikola Tesla um, and other inventors like Thomas Edison among others created devices and technological advancements that wowed the world transformed the world You have to think about this deeply. You have to have much insight to observe what happened so as to realize, so as to comprehend that this document that was presented, known as the Declaration of Independence to Great Britain, the monarchy, was the document that created the quantum leap to the modern world. Think about it. For thousands and thousands and thousands of years, generations came and went. And for thousands and thousands of years, most governments were predominantly dictatorships of some sort or another. People presenting themselves as gods, as kings, as having royal blood of rulership, of power. And and think about that concept deeply because it is highly significant that throughout history, this was the rule. It was the norm. People would invade other people, tribes, countries, empires, establish themselves as emperors or kings or gods of people. And and it was barbaric in comparison to what we have. Obviously, that was all they knew back then. But there are exceptions to the rule. There were always exceptions to that rule. And that's exactly what happened with the Declaration of Independence and the United States Constitution, which I would suggest, I would suggest strongly that you consider that it was a document, a almost like a form of technology, just like the internet and the computer revolutionized the business and the known world today. Think of the iPhone. No, that document was the technology that helped governments transcend what was back then known as royal uh, bloodlines and monarchies. It was one of the greatest human victories over negative thinking that transcended that known world. It was a blessing. I would even suggest that if there is a God, 
and since there's since usually when people think of God they refer to him as a loving God a God of love a God of peace a God of who who desires for its people to prosper to be happy I would suggest that even possibly very probable at a quantum level this document was inspired by the concept of love and if you believe God is love then you can think or you can consider that just maybe there's a possibility that the document was inspired by God because it is a document of love now people romanticize love and this is a deep concept to think about because you have to consider that the document for the first time in history allowed for people to have freedom of speech to have freedom of religion to have the right to practice a religion or not practice a religion that they had the freedom of speech to be able to speak against you know authorities or tyrannies or you know complain to public officials public servants which that's exactly where the constitution puts the government a, a public servant to the people the government is for the people not the other way around as it's as it was known to be um, before the United States Constitution was established and during the 13 colonies which founded the the one of the greatest the, the greatest country in the world as it has been seen objectively factually with all the data this document allowed for a single country to have large amounts of property it allowed for for tremendous progress in a very short period of time that allowed for people to prosper to to work to be able to assemble to do business without interference of undue taxes or rules or regulations that undermine people's creative ability or their natural annealable rights to life the pursuit of happiness and so forth this is highly significant and it's something to think about and ponder about and appreciate that this document has allowed us to live a life where we can speak our thoughts to have freedom of expression without worrying about some authority threatening to kill you and your family for doing so which was always the case back then think about that that is highly significant this document allowed for the greatest freedom we could ever imagine and it's, con- and it's still continuing to um, bring great prosperity and abundance in our lives. So I want to leave you this with this. I'll continue this riff on the next part of this. I highly suggest you consider um, looking into it and think about this. And look forward to my next riff as I continue to give you ideas on this.